welcome back on aicog tv brought to you by mcure and the right doctor.com i'm privileged to have with me dr prakash trivedi who is a pioneer in endoscopy he has been a president of foxy in 2015 thank you so much for joining us on mcure aicog tv sir thanks a lot we are going to have a conversation with sir on the very important topic that's endometriosis and enigma and we all know that how Uh, endometriosis can become a serious problem at times and all the medical majors or surgical majors at times comes to and kind of a stand still and we need a definite line of treatment or a line of protocol for our patient so here is the right uh, uh, expert in the field of endometriosis as well as in the field of laparoscopy so thank you so much for joining let me begin with my first question that's a symptomatic endometrioma a patient having a symptomatic endometrioma wishes to become pregnant so what's that uh, what would be you uh, what do you offer as a gold standard treatment uh, i think so we have to understand that endometriosis is the disease of the millennium so it's extremely common mild endometriosis it's all right but when you have an symptomatic which means painful endometrioma and a patient is desirous of pregnancy she is an ideal patient wherein after evaluation the amh and other factors the gold standard is to do first good laparoscopic surgery by that i mean you do a proper surgery remove the endometrioma remove the lining restore the anatomy and immediately thereafter you start the treatment so that she can achieve pregnancy and in the first 6 to 7 months she has golden chance but if there are repeat endometrioma then this doesn't become the gold standard then you have to modify the treatment so what's the medical line of treatment for endometriosis and how does it really gives a results to our patients and that's very important because medical treatment usually uh, suppresses endometriosis which means the moment you take off the injection or the tablet treatment it just uh, you spend 3 to 6 months in a patient of endometriosis wasting fertility time so uh, the case which we told just now an ideal thing is the moment a surgery is done after that if there is residual surgery you will give a depo to control the remaining part of the disease more important is start the fertility treatment so suppose even if you are going to give stimulation protocol you give stimulation protocol start dihydrogestron which is a retroprogesterone from day 5 to day 25 now this doesn't affect uh, ovulation it doesn't affect periods but it keeps endometriosis quiet give her the stimulation protocol whatever you are planning which may be tablets which may be addition of gonadotropin plan an iui with it because when you do control ovarian hyperstimulation and iui the pregnancy rate goes three times and this success is highest in the first 6 to 7 months and if you wait for longer time then the immunological acceptance start getting uh, reduced yeah so the progestins do play a important role so i've heard of about a new uh, progesterone that is a dynogest uh, and i think uh, in the literature it has been talked about as a very uh, the recent and the most potent one uh, dynogest as a progestin for endometriosis Correct. your uh, experience on dynogest yeah uh, dynogest is a very nice molecule and uh, the beauty about this molecule is that you do have patients of endometriosis who have ch- a child you have spread endometriosis now we have an endometrioma if you give a depo it's like giving uh antibiotic for an abscess uh dino dinogest is very useful because it primarily controls the spread of endometriosis mm-hmm. so it takes care of the endometriosis the symptoms of endometriosis mm-hmm. and it makes patient symptom free mm-hmm. which may be for 3 months 6 months or longer because one thing is for sure anybody will leave the patient but endometriosis doesn't leave the patient very true so when you have even a treatment done then dinogest such drug can be used for a certain period of time which may be 6 months plus till you get 
the period wherein she is disease free for a short time and whatever you want in terms of treatment, pregnancy etc that you can uh, so it's a new molecule but extremely effective and I am using on regular basis. Wow that sounds very, really wonderful that Dino just has the capability to give a disease free interval for our endometriosis patient where previous progestin could have failed to some extent okay. and then we could plan for their uh, different protocols for being con uh, getting conceived. Uh, sir, when it comes to an advanced endometriosis, I'm sure that a lot of patients, a lot of doctors look forward for your uh, intervention. And I definitely remember your oration last year in a Foxy. Uh, so beautifully you have um, uh, got all those surgical cases and I think you talked about your uh, wife also being uh, treated for one of the big myoma if I'm not yeah. wrong. And uh, in such uh, surg surgeries, during such surgeries, the safeguarding our uh, ureter and the bladder is very, very critical, which I think a junior or somebody who is not experienced could miss it. So what's your uh, message or what could be the tip that you would advise to a fellow laparoscopic surgeons how to safeguard ureter? I think so that's a very important uh, uh, question because today I had the talk on same aspect and we do have certain percentage of endometriosis affecting the bladder, affecting the ureter, affecting the bowel. bowel yeah. So we have to be very careful. We have 34,000 gynecologists, maybe we have 1,000 endoscopists, but there will be only 5 endoscopists who are capable to treat frozen pelvis or disease involving ureter or bladder Absolutely. or the rectovaginal area. Yeah. My message to the laparoscopic surgeon is don't do surgery just because you know surgery. You have to understand that you your first surgery is going to relieve the patient to the best, which may sometimes involve excision of the endometrium, opening the bladder, suturing it. If it's ureteric endometriosis, you may excise it and you can do an implantation. If it's a bowel endometriosis, the most important thing is prevent injury to the rectum right. so basically you separate it nicely and there are many patients who are for hysterectomy with frozen pelvis and rect rectal nodule so in that patient you have to nicely go from normal tissue to the diseased tissue mm -hmm. identify the ureter because they get medialized so you identify and see the entire track of ureter then you separate the structures come lift the uterus so you can go and dissect the posterior part. Posterior dissection done nicely more towards the uterus, which means you are knowingly keeping the disease part of endometrium on the rectum. Suppose if we go below the disease part, there is a risk of opening the bowel. And when you open the large bowel, you need a diverting colostomy. So once you have separated that, you have separated the entire part if the uterus was to be removed it is removed if it was to be preserved it is preserved then with the tenaculum you hold the nodule and then you gradually mm -hmm. dissect it out from the rectum mm -hmm. and you'll be surprised that that surgery can be done by few but those who do those few surgeries are referral doctors mm -hmm. not for india but for world and we world. have excellent laparoscopic surgeon in India who can be counted as a top endometriosis surgeon anyway. Excellent. Thank you so much. How beautifully you were trying to show us. I wish I could have had an OT center here and you could have had a live example of you operating on that advanced endometriosis patient. I am sure I will plan something like that on a di direct relay for all the doctors who are, you know, would get benefited out of you. Uh, sir, um, uh, Recurrence is one of the biggest challenge in endometriosis. No matter what kind of medical treatment or a surgical line of treatment that we offer to our patient. So what's your, um, uh, what's your line of treatment for a recurrence and how to you know, uh, postpone yeah. that recurrence? Yeah. Post-operative, what do we, what's the ideal the drug? The recurrence is almost 70%. Yeah. And as I told you, husband will leave the patient but endometriosis will not leave uh, so recurrence is a fact. So when you do the first surgery, preferably do the best surgery. Now that patient has come for infertility. So in the first six to seven months, give her 
basic to advanced treatment and get a result. Mm -hmm. She is pregnant, her recurrence will drop down and go back by 7 to 10 years further. So that is one, one part the way in which recurrence should be prevented. Sometimes you have a patient who is operated by somebody who has not done a proper surgery, but yet there is recurrence. And still more catchy is there is an unmarried female with painful large endometrioma. You have to do surgery. So when you do that surgery, you see the AMH, you remove the disease, keep the ovarian tissues adequate. Mm -hmm. And she will going, she is going to come back after marriage with recurrent endometrioma. Mm -hmm. And that is the time when you can again just drain and mm -hmm. just fulgurate so that the AMH is not affected. Put her on active treatment at that moment of mm -hmm. time. Get the result again. You have to understand that if she needs after laparoscopic surgery, IVF, because fecundity in endometriosis is less than 3%. So if she needs advanced infertility treatment, that should be done. You should use you, those drugs which not only stimulate the ovary, but are also beneficial in cases of endometriosis and give gonadotropin. And even in IVF, though the number of uh, oocytes may be less, but quality the would be overcomes the, the quantity. quantity. And we at our center and it's suggested everywhere if you're treating a patient of infertility in this fashion it has to be ICSI and you try and take it to blastosis and transfer once they're pregnant and in today's time late marriages people yeah, coming at 39 such cases are always going to be there thank you so much sir i think uh, definitely your views will enlighten all of all of us